but Mobile, Alabama, you're you're banned from selling Slowly String um, wow. in the city. Um, so, well, thank God the people of Mobile, Alabama, are protected. By the way, right. from the scourge of Slowly <laughs> String. Scourge of Slowly String. <laughs> that's right. So it's obviously newer. Um, and then you know, and then uh, I mean, as I gave the example earlier, you, you have this, uh, you have the, the kind of crazy ideas, and then you've got the uh, the the things that really kind of motivated the piece, which are uh, the you know my my piece in the New York Post, which are essentially the modern versions of the crazy old laws, and and that's where you know I, I put things like um, you know uh, New York State trying to to regulate when Chick Fil A can be open. Um, and mm-hmm. things like that, and then, frankly, even some of these occupational licenses and other laws that just um, the laws exist. If you try to explain why on earth you would need this law, um, good luck attempting to to make sense of it. Americans are capable of achieving extraordinary things when they have the freedom and opportunity to do so. This is American potential, and here's your host, Jeff Crank. All right, thanks for being with us for another episode of American Potential. We've got kind of a fun one today. Have you have you ever heard about a law and you thought to yourself, man, that just seems kind of dumb. And you wondered who came up with that idea. <laughs> well, throughout history, lawmakers from federal, state, and local cities have passed laws intended to maintain order and protect their citizens. But As society makes shifts in norms and values, some laws seem absurd or outdated, and many are beyond absurd. Uh, From prohibiting unusual activities to regulating seemingly trivial matters, these laws offer a glimpse into history, but then also beg the question, what in the world happened to make this a law? So what are a few examples of some absurd laws? In Mobile, Alabama, you can't have confetti. Crazy. In Vermont, you can't paint a horse. And in San Francisco, it's illegal to store your own stuff in your garage. It can only be used for a vehicle. Okay. (laughs) There have been books written and websites created to talk about some of these absurd laws. And today's guest wrote an article about this topic. I want to welcome Casey Maddox, who's a friend, but he's also the vice president of legal and judicial strategy for Americans for prosperity. All right, Casey. Hey, thanks for joining us now. uh, I mean, some of these laws sound totally insane. So I'm, I'm curious, what are some of the absurd laws? Uh, Like, I guess what's the most absurd law you think that's out there as you were doing your research on this? Yeah. I I mean, you know, there's, uh, so basically the idea for this piece came up because I, I'm, I'm a nerd. And so I, (laughs) um, and it was a nerd in high school, uh, shockingly. Uh, And so (laughs) nerds grow up to be nerds. They grow up to be bigger nerds, Casey. That's right. That's right. You become a professional nerd. Um, (laughs) So basically, uh, I remember when I was a kid, I, there were these you know, books that were uh, about uh, crazy laws. And for whatever reason, I was drawn to those. Uh, and some, you know, some of the other listeners may, may remember those. And so um, I just remember reading about these things, these crazy things that states had come up with. And uh, donkeys sleeping in bathtubs. Arizona prohibits donkeys from sleeping in bathtubs. <laughs> and so that one uh, stuck with me. Um, I have no idea why... You know, why anyone ever thought they wanted their donkey? I mean, who keeps the donkey? <laughs> who puts the donkey in a bathtub to right. sleep? Um, you know, the the scenario in which the donkey decided to submit to this um, <laughs> and be kept in a bathtub. I don't. And then why the government would get yeah. involved. Right? Yeah. Who's the lawmaker who said, you know what? We better have a law to stop uh, this from ever happening. That. <laughs> That's right. Um, and this is from like 1910. Right. So. That's, uh, you know, so there are laws like that all over the country. And really kind of the inspiration to this piece is I was thinking about that and thinking about some of these ideas that lawmakers are coming up with now mm-hmm. um, that I thought, you know, I'm, this isn't really different from some of these ridiculous laws that we've had in the past. So the most recent example now, you've got uh, California decides it's going to create gender neutral toy aisles that you're required to have as a business right? Um, in uh, in California. And then that um, in, um, in 
New York State, they're looking to try to require Chick-fil-A to be open certain hour, which they can't constitutionally do. Sure, sure. Um, but that's not going to stop them from trying <laughs> as lawmakers. And so, um, so yeah, it was basically the same kind of crazy, crazy laws that we come up with. And yeah. then, of course, you have the common examples of these state licensing laws, where if you want to be in business as a florist or, um, you know, uh, different professions like that, you have to be, uh, have to be licensed as a, as a florist. Uh, you know, this isn't really that different from, uh, laws about donkeys and bathtubs. It's <laughs> sort of the modern version of why on earth yeah. do we even bother to have this law? Yeah. Now you must've had, did you have a lot of fun? You must've had some fun researching for this article. Oh, it was it was a lot of fun. Uh, <laughs> I've I put out the village to a lot of folks with an AFP for their their favorite examples of the stupidest laws, and there are plenty um, of of ideas that people came back back yeah. with. Many of which uh, ended up being in the piece. Yeah. So, I mean, obviously, you gave us some examples, but uh, you know, a, a few more. I guess a few of the uh, of the totally absurd laws that you talked about in this article. Yeah. So, you know, you've got um, the uh, example of uh, in Connecticut, they've been regulating for many years the bounciness of pickles. <laughs> um, I, I mean, it's just never even How does know, it, sourness I, of pickles. Sure. Saltiness of pickles. Sure. I did. I wasn't even aware that pickles were supposed to be bouncy yeah. or had a certain bounciness that was expected of it. But <laughs> Connecticut has been regulating. That. And so if your pickles don't have the requisite bounciness. It's not a pickle. Um, I, it's not a pickle. They don't <laughs> count. Um, you know, so uh, it's, you know, so I mean, there, there's examples like that, I think, all over the country um, that just make very little sense. I, I mean, here in, in Virginia, apparently we uh, we regulated. Um, uh, well, actually, now it was in, in Colorado. I think oh. one of the, the examples from Colorado um, was that uh, if you are uh uh, that you can't, so you can't die pets. Oh, um, the interesting thing to me is that the, you know, so you, you can die yourself, but you can't die pets. <laughs> the, the interesting thing to me was that, uh, as you can dye your own hair. Yeah. Um, but the interesting part of that to me was that it's very specific about which pets can't be dyed. Huh. Um, it's only small pets that can't be dyed. Apparently you could die large pets. If you want to die a horse, um, <laughs> you know, you could do that. You just can't die <laughs> like chicks. Apparently you could die chickens but not chicks. Um, so, you know, I mean, there, there's examples like that, I think, all over uh, the code where someone decided they wanted something to be done and they got a law passed. Yeah. I wonder if you could do small dogs, but or you can do big dogs, but not small dogs. Did it say? That's right. Yeah. No, that, yeah. Well, that, that would imply, I mean, it was basically, I think it actually said small animals. So, yeah. So maybe you can, you can die a, uh, you know, Rhodesian Ritz back, but don't die <laughs> chihuahuas. The chihuahuas, uh, no go on the chihuahuas. Maybe the theory is that, you know, uh, look, uh, uh, ch you may be able to die a chihuahua, um, but the, you know, try if you try to die a Great Dane, that problem is going to take care of itself. We don't <laughs> it have probably to, would. We don't have to pass the law <laughs> um, to tell you not to do that. That'll that'll solve itself. Yeah, solve that's itself. right. That's right. Those are those are just crazy. I I still the donkey in the bathtub one. That's yeah. that's really. I mean, you don't know the origin of this at all. Well, you, no, I I don't, uh, and I I've not been able to find out the origin of it. Um, if we've got a listener who uh, is able to figure this out, uh, I think you would would do the country a great service in trying to help us understand. Yeah. Well, we could ask how it wired. Maybe yeah. Stephen Shadegg, who's we put him on that. He's the AFP state director. In Arizona, right. maybe we could get him going on that and see, yeah. see what he says. Or, or maybe, maybe we should, uh, you know, he, he needs to get working on repealing this law that's, that's preventing, a, um, you know, freedom for Arizona's uh, donkey owners. <laughs> nope. What's he been doing all this time if he hasn't I, been I working on that it. piece of legislation? Uh, now, exactly right. many of these are old, like seem like they're older laws, but there's also, I mean, some of them are newer, right? You've got some laws that have been passed that are just crazy absurd laws as well so, right but what are those yeah no that that's right um so i mean mobile alabama on the on the sort of traditional crazy side you've got mobile alabama bans the sale of silly string that's obviously pretty new um every parent probably understands the um you know where where the idea for that law would have come from um 
but Mobile, Alabama, you're you're banned from selling wow. silly string um, in the city. Well, thank God the people um, of so, Mobile, Alabama, are protected. By the way, from the scourge right. of silly string. <laughs> <laughs> the scourge of silly string. That is right. So it's obviously newer. Um, and then you know, and then uh, I mean, as I gave the example earlier, you, you have this, uh, you have the the kind of crazy ideas, and then you've got the uh, the the things that really kind of motivated the piece, which are uh, the you know my my piece in the New York Post, which are essentially the modern versions of the crazy old laws, and and that's where you know I I put things like um, you know uh, New York State trying to to regulate when Chick Fil A can be open mm-hmm. um, and things like that, and then frankly even some of these occupational licensing and other laws that just um, the laws exist. If you try to explain why on earth you would need this law, um, good luck attempting to to make sense of it. Um, and so uh, that that was kind of the the idea. Let's let's try to figure out um, what is it that's causing lawmakers uh, to uh, to spend their time creating laws like this in the past, and uh, you know, obviously, it's it's still there in the present. The lawmakers feel this compulsion uh, to act. Yeah. What uh, so we talked about Colorado? Was that the dumbest one that you came up with in Colorado? Was that you can't die, you can die large pets, but not small pets? Was yeah, that the I dumbest think, Colorado so, one, or were there other dumb ones? Yeah, I th- so I think there was there was one that may have been about whether or not um, your cat needs a tail light um, in Colorado. A, I think a that tail was part light? of the law. A tail light, yeah. Um, which I'm not. I I I mean, good luck. <laughs> Trying to get a tail light on your cat. Yeah, um, that's I right. feel like you, if you can pull that off. We would have um, we would have to have a state tail cat tail light inspector as well. I would imagine. That's right. That's that. right. Um, so yeah, there's you know there's there's just um, a multitude of these things. Okay. Um, now you live in Virginia though. What are some of the crazy ones? You got to have some crazy ones. Virginia's been around a little longer than Colorado. There's got to be some crazy ones in Virginia. It has, you know, we're a bit buttoned up in Virginia. Uh-huh. Um, you know, lawmakers in Virginia tend to be um, uh, a little more um, sort of uh, reserved. Yeah. Um, you know, so uh, it's so it's not quite on the same level um, as Colorado, but there there are a few. Um, Virginia. So you, my favorite maybe from Virginia is that there's a a law that prohibits you from shining a light on a hen house. Um, <laughs> But only, you know, only within a, a certain portion of the day. But you can't shine a light on a hen mm. house. Um, but it, it says nothing. It so, says nothing about roosters. Like, could I shine one on a rooster and that's okay? Well, it's, and, and in fairness, it's the it's a poultry house. So I guess oh, that would include um, it would include both hens okay. and roosters. But yeah, no flashlights on um, on poultry houses in Virginia. Okay. Um, I mean, I thought it was so, crazy when I thought it was just hens, but now that I understand. <laughs> A, it's a poultry yeah, house right. that maybe makes more sense. Well, that's right. It's 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 at least it's not you know uh, sex specific, oh, so sure. we haven't violated the equal protection law. <laughs> that's or right. Yeah, so, that's something. That's right. Oh, that's crazy. All right, now many of oh, did you have others from Virginia or was that it? No, I think that was the best one. That was from the Virginia. best one for from Virginia. Um, well, now these are the ones we've been talking about are pretty much state and local level laws, but are there kind of crazy federal, absurd federal laws too? Oh boy. <laughs> feels like there ought to be all kinds of them. Um, I would imagine it's gotta be, so I haven't looked at them. Um, but you know, we are, we're at something like, um, uh, I mean the, the mountains of, of paper that come from, uh, the federal regulatory agencies. Um, I mean, there's, there's plenty of those. I mean, obviously you've, we've had, uh, requirements before about the, you know, your mattress tags, or maybe, you know, that that's the one that everyone oh, sure. knows. And yet we just sort of move on with life, yeah. uh, with the reality that I'm not supposed to remove that. Tag. <laughs> um, and you know, like no one ever says, well, maybe we should remove that, that regulation, um, because that's crazy. Um, and we shouldn't have a, a situation where someone is actually prosecuted under that. Um, We've all just sort of accepted it that, well, it's a crazy law that makes no sense, but um, but it's there and it's on the mattress that I sleep on every day that I can't touch it. Yeah. Now, by the way, if anybody wants to read the article that Casey wrote about absurd, absurd laws, we have it linked in the description of the podcast here. So they can just click on that link 
and and uh, and take it. What kind of reaction, by the way, Casey, have you gotten from uh, folks reading that article? I, it's been great. I've gotten, uh, you know, I've done a number of uh, of interviews, especially radio interviews um, around the country. It's it's produced exactly what right. I had hoped, which is basically a conversation about, um, you know, the examples of lawmakers today creating what are uh, supposedly, you know, sensible laws, but are really no different than that. Um, especially some of the occupational licensing and and other kind of laws. Um, and then the other thing has been, you know, why is it? Uh, why is it that lawmakers are are behaving this way? Why are they passing laws like this? And what are they not doing um, with the time that they um, that they're spending on on these kinds of laws? And that's, I think, been a uh, uh, an interesting conversation about um, really about what the role of lawmakers is and what our role as voters should be um, in holding them accountable. Mm-hmm. What it would be good, I think. I mean, I know that we wouldn't want to spend too much time on something like this, but wouldn't it be good to go back maybe to a legislator in some of these states and take the craziest one, take the donkey in the bathtub right. example, right. and just go to a legislator and say, look, what, try and repeal it and just see what happens. Like, just make it one of your right. bills and, and see what happens. Right. Have we thought about doing that? Uh, I, I don't think we have. Um you know, this is we're back to the uh, uh, Stephen Shaddy question. <laughs> What's he um, been doing <laughs> in Arizona? But yeah, I, I think that's, uh, you know, um, I think that's a, a, a solid objective for someone. Uh, let's let's start, you know, moving on, taking some of these things away. I think in, you know, in Utah, you can't fish from horseback. Um, that feels like a clear violation of my uh, of my freedom. Um <laughs> So we, you know, we we got some problems that need to get solved yeah. here. Um, it, it, it's 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 mind numbing to think that somebody at one point thought that that was like an important enough thing for the legislature to spend right. time on in in the state of Utah. Right. Um, well, and I'd be interested to see if some of these were, if someone tried to repeal them, like to, again, take the donkey in the bathtub. Right. Would the bathtub lobby come out and be against that? Would they be for it? Would there be a, you know, a donkey right. lobby that came out or, or would it just be like, yeah, this is dumb. And we all agree it's dumb. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, there's probably a certain part of, of the, the population that would sort of take the, you know, kind of old school conservative, um, you know, well, let's not move this fence before we figure out why the fence was, uh, was put there in the first place. Sort of right. Approach, right. Which is, at least somewhat understandable. Okay, well, you know, let's let's figure this out. Why was this a problem in the first place? Why uh, why is this there? I mean, most people, I think, basically look at these things and sort of move on from them. Um, but I think that's the thing. That's how you end up with, you know, if you you ask everybody in Louisiana, um, is it a good idea for us to have um, florists have to have a florist license before they can sell you flowers? You're you're going to find very few people who are not. Um, already licensed right. florists who think that's right. a good idea. Um, the florists lobby um, will tell you it's a very good idea for reasons and don't ask any right. more questions. <laughs> um, but the, you know, everybody else in Louisiana would say, no, why on earth would we be requiring florists to get a license? Right. I, I can see your, your floral, floral arrangements in the window. Um, I know whether or not they're good. I know what you're charging me. That's really all that I care about. Um, you know, and so uh, if if I assume that you you can tell the difference between uh, you know flowers and poison oak, <laughs> I, that this is the only relevant sure. question, right? And that and, could um, make a good floral arrangement you know, for your mother in law or something potentially, Casey. <laughs> that's right. I mean, they, they, they still have a purpose. <laughs> there are definitely people uh, that you may want to give uh, a poison that's oak right. arrangement to. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I think uh, for for um. You know, with with many of these things, it's basically just, um, you know, a, 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 a an issue of motivation. Uh, it's, you know, inertia. Uh, we sort of have had these bad laws existing that made no sense. And the problem with bad laws is that, you know, they're not neutral. They're sitting there restricting freedom in right. some way. Um, and, you know, like I, I, I may not have any desire to have a, a donkey in my bathtub, <laughs> but, you might. Um, but with many of these, 
That's, <laughs> I might one day. Um, um, and with many of these laws, they they have, you know, they're actually restraining freedom yeah. in some way. Like, you know, the occupational licensing laws. Like, no, I don't, I don't know why it's there. It doesn't make any sense. Okay, well, would in the meantime, it's actually preventing people from being able to right. make a living yeah. doing something. Uh, for the people that it does affect, it affects them pretty significantly. And so our inertia shouldn't be the reason why we just decide to not bother with right. fixing this Well, problem. and you mentioned, like, obviously the donkey in the bathtub probably doesn't have a daily impact on anyone. And that's probably why it hasn't been repealed, because nobody cares. But you mentioned... Uh, you know, the, the, the florists in Louisiana or the one, and I can't remember what state it is. Maybe, you know, uh, the hair braiding, it was another Southern state, I think that had licensing requirement for hair braiding. I think Missouri, Missouri has yeah. the hair braiding and, law, I think. Uh, well, I think there maybe yeah, a few. And it was, it was several thousand dollars to go get licensed to do hair braiding when re- literally you've got, you know, single mom somewhere who's probably really good at braiding hair. And she she can't maybe afford to go get the license, so it's an impediment to her success. So so there are some of these absurd laws that are just absurd and have no impact, but there's others that really do have an impact, as you mentioned. Yeah, that's right. Okay. That's right. Yeah, and it, it's sort of getting over that hurdle. And then, of course, I mean, the other problem with with all of these laws is that you know when you have lawmakers that are spending their time in sort of these uh, these you know fights over gender neutral toy aisles or Gas stoves in New York. At New York has decided to ban gas stoves. Um, uh, New York, New yes. York's got a lot of problems. Uh, in addition to the Chick Fil A fight, so when you have states like that that are or lawmakers that are spending their time working on those things, then you know the other question is, well, what are they not spending? right? Um, and and that's where I think we as voters, uh, you you can't depend on the courts to solve all these problems, and because um, the the courts are. They're going to let democracy happen to a large degree. And so they're going to let people make a lot of really bad laws. And so if we are not engaged as voters and saying, well, I, I'm going to I'm going to make you do your job. I'm going to hold you accountable for the things that you're actually supposed to be doing. If we're not doing that, then, of course, they're going to uh, do this stuff that, you know, gets them some, uh, you know, some social media cred or. Uh, you know, is uh, nice for one particular demographic that decides they don't like Chick-fil-A or uh, whatever the issue is, instead of saying, <clears throat> look, why don't you spend your time doing the stuff that we actually hired yeah, you to do in the first Exactly. Time? Well, listen, thanks for joining us. I mean, did I miss anything? Are there any last minute crazy ones you want to throw out there? Um, no, I, we, I hit the, we hit the, the really uh, bad ones. The best. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Uh, well, it, again, if folks want to look at your article, it's linked here in the podcast, and and uh, you can just read Casey's article. It was in the New York Post uh, on absurd laws. And Casey, you know, first of all, thanks for doing this. I think it's important that we that we do this and highlight these kind of crazy laws. But also, thanks for all you do. You do great work. Um, you know, keeping America free and the Constitution alive. So, thanks for all you do. All right. Well, thanks to Casey. I mean, I don't know. Those are all kind of nutty. I guess we didn't really get into the the car one in San Francisco too much that I talked about in the intro. But uh, I don't know. I think my favorite crazy one was the donkey in the bathtub. It was the opening one. That was kind of nutty. Like, why in the world would that even be a law? I, it would be a good historical research project for somebody who wants to who has nothing better to do i guess than to spend time researching that but what in the world did how did this become a problem well we got a donkey we got a bathtub it's bad when they mix i i just don't understand how that came about but anyway um these are absurd laws no doubt and i thank casey for coming on and talking about them but again it's important that we we stay focused on the fact that legislators can do really good things to help empower us, up, power us, give us freedom, give us liberty, or they can do things that just really detract from society. And some of these really do detract from society. Anyway, hey, thanks for joining us. It was kind of a fun episode today. Uh, thanks for being with us. Remember, liberty and freedom, man, they're precious. And we see some of these laws that legislators... Don't have a problem taking away your liberty and your freedom. Don't take 
liberty and freedom for granted. Go out there, defend liberty, defend freedom. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for listening to American Potential. You may listen to more stories from Americans working every day to expand freedom and opportunity in their communities by visiting AmericanPotential.com.